Okay, so we have tried various foldable devices like Samsung Z Fold 4, Samsung Z Flip 4, Mi Fold, but today we have a new player in the house. Vivo X Fold Plus. And this foldable looks better than Samsung. Has like almost zero crease. Has flagship level camera, which Samsung doesn't provide with the Z Fold 4. But there is one, one major con to know about the Vivo X Fold. So stay tuned till the end. Pratik, Techwiser, let's go. First up, you get this huge case-like box. Vivo does spend a lot of time on the presentation. Inside, you get the phone. I'll keep that aside. But where's the rest? This thing doesn't open. <laughs> That's strange. Usually, there is paperwork and a SIM ejector too. Oh, you pull this thing out. Man, I feel so dumb. And now inside, you get some premium paperwork. Like, there's a card and everything. Man. Damn. You get a Type-C to Type-C cable, a charging adapter. And there is something very special about this charging adapter. You can charge two devices at once. Like, Vivo is expecting you to have another phone. And see here, I don't know if I can show you on the camera, but the inside of the box is made up of a velvet type material. Like, so cool. Now, there are three things which I feel makes Vivo X Fold Plus better than a Samsung foldable or all foldables out there. First is the build quality. This is very interesting. In fact, one of the few foldables that can completely shut no space. Whereas if you see the Z Fold 4 still has space when it folds. Plus, it can also stop at different levels. Wow. And see, the phone feels very premium in hand, like just opening the phone, seeing this cool butterfly animation, it takes the whole fold experience to a new level. The back is made of this fine texture leather. So there is no fingerprint or a chance of breaking it. And you get a pre-installed screen protector on the inside as well as on the outside display. So that is free and cool. In fact, for a foldable, see, this is a normal phone with a cover. The Vivo X Fold Plus feels just as thick as this phone in real life. But you still feel that bulk in your pocket. The phone is quite heavy. See here, it weighs around 311 grams. The Samsung Z Fold 4 weighs around 268 grams. And normal phones are around 210 grams. So almost 50% more weight. But the best thing is, you get this alert slider. And frankly, the alert slider is very underrated. Like it is so useful. If I want to quickly put my phone on silent mode, all I have to do is do this and that's it. Good job and to every smartphone brand out there, please, please copy it, please. One like is equal to one prayer for alert slider. Second would be display. Like see here, if I show you this, it looks so much like a normal phone. You get a 120Hz 6.53 inch cover display it's curved on the right with fewer bezels and you can use it like any other phone without even opening the bigger display. And when you need to open, the inner display is a 120Hz 8.03 inch folding display. Like firstly, the crease where it folds is barely noticeable. Like it is there. You can only see it at extreme angles, but most of the time you won't even notice it. Now to make that possible, Vivo uses a wide area to fold the display. Like Samsung folds fold this way, whereas the Vivo fold folds this way in a teardrop way. That's why it even closes properly. Much better than Samsung's foldable. Also, Vivo claims that the hinge can fold up to 3 lakh times. So suppose you open and close it 100 times a day, that makes it 3000 days, more than 8 years. By the time Apple would release their first folding iPhone, you hope. Also, both the displays are LTPO panels, so the refresh rate is dynamic. Like for instance, if I'm browsing the web, it will be 120Hz, but when I'm watching a YouTube video, it comes down to 60Hz. This saves battery life. And the folding display can go all the way from 1Hz to 120Hz. And the display is really good looking. Like here's a cool thing. If I open the display, it continues the playback so seamlessly and smooth. It also supports HDR, so you can watch HDR content on YouTube. But you get this punch hole camera in the inner display instead of an invisible camera. And see here, when I'm watching YouTube videos on this, this looks distracting on this big display. But the most important thing about the display is you get an in-display 3D ultrasonic fingerprint scanner on both the displays. And credit where due, Vivo is the first maker to implement in-display fingerprint scanner in a foldable. Oh, you also get dual speakers. Have a listen. Like the speakers are so balanced and you have a good bass. And third would be camera quality. Like usually foldables have like an inferior camera compared to the flagship. But this thing has the best Vivo camera plus Zeiss coating. So in theory, this should give good pictures, but that's just theory. 
we are out here to test that uh, this thing has a 50 megapixel main camera with gimbal and the photos from the main sensor are good like the natural blur is so DSLR like in this picture it looks sharp and the colors are nice like this picture for instance even if you zoom in on my face it is quite sharp but yes the main camera takes slightly warmer tone like see this picture of me it looks a bit yellow than it should be but the HDR and all it is pretty good you also get a 48 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and the ultra wide angle camera takes slightly cooler tones like see the same picture we clicked in ultra wide it looks cooler and this is an issue with this phone like there is quite a lot of color shift between the lenses other than that even the ultra wide angle takes pretty normal photos you also get a 12 megapixel 2x zoom and the picture looks kind of washed out but like the main camera even this camera takes slightly warmer pictures you also get a 8 megapixel 5x zoom and here too the pictures are washed out like see this picture my face looks so dull or the same even in this picture and you get a 16 megapixels front selfie camera on the outer as well as the inner display and the picture quality is quite good vivo is known for the selfie camera and it shows like the hdr processing of the selfie in this picture looks a bit better than the main sensor coming to the video you can shoot in 8k 30 fps or even 4k 60 fps but this video is shot in 4k 30 fps just curious, do you guys shoot in 60 FPS? If yes, then why? Just wanted to know. And you can do 1080p 30 FPS on the front camera. Like it's 2022, phones can fold, but you still can't do 4K on the front selfie camera. So overall, I would say that the cameras are good, but they are not very consistent. But all these are like software issues. They can be fixed with a software update. And even the performance is top flagship level. You get the latest Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 along with 12 GB RAM and 256 GB UFS 3.1 storage. Out of the box, you get Android 12. On Android 2, it scored more than 10 lakh. Quite good for Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, but benchmarks are just number. Let's play Apex Legends and see how well it performs. Okay, we are playing at 60 FPS Ultra and... Nice! Oh, he has a shield. Nice one. The gameplay is really good, but does it support split screen? What if I fold the display? No, it doesn't. What? Can I reforce it? No, not supported. Which brings me to the con I talked about in the intro. Software. For starters, this is a Chinese variant and it has Origin OS. In India, Vivo phones have Funtouch OS. And Origin OS isn't bad. Like the day-to-day -day performance, surfing the web, watching videos on YouTube or Netflix is very fluid. The animations are good, no lag whatsoever. You even get some cool split-screen features. Like for instance, if you're watching YouTube, all you have to do is do this and it converts into a small floating window. You can also go to the app overview menu, long press and convert an app into a split screen mode. Like, cool, so cool. But overall, Origin OS or the Vivo software lacks some of the important feature, which makes it a bit behind Samsung foldables. Like see here, there is no quick task switcher. On the Fold 4, you have the taskbar at the bottom, simply tapping it instantly takes you to the app. This is very handy for a large display and Samsung is way ahead in this. Also, Samsung considers both the inner and the cover display as separate phones and I like that implementation because I use the inner bigger display for watching YouTube and media consumption while I use the cover display for daily tasks like replying to messages or Google Pay. So Samsung gives me two home screens, outside and inside. On Vivo Fold, that is not the case. Whatever is on the outer screen is similar on the inner screen. Also, Samsung Fold supports S Pen. You can write, scribble, draw on the larger screen. Also, the biggest difference is Samsung Fold series has IP rating. Vivo X Fold Plus has no IP rating. Now, personally, I still feel that foldables are a bit delicate so that IP rating gives a bit of confidence in using it like a normal phone. So is the Vivo X Fold Plus better than the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4? Well, to be honest, it is a really tough competition. Vivo has nailed the hardware. The build quality looks and feels better than the Z Fold 4. You get in-display fingerprint scanner as well as there is almost invisible crease. But as of now, Samsung is already on the fourth generation of foldables and the software is really, really good. But they are the only company that is taking foldables seriously. So they need competition and more competition is equal to better innovation and better pricing for foldables. So if Xiaomi and Vivo launches their foldable, it could force Samsung to do better and lower the price win win for us but as of now in india foldable phones have a long way to go because they are very expensive way out of the reach of majority of indians on that note this is signing off see you in the next video pew, pew, pew.